harm three, and no life. All right, well, so cure three is one of them. Oh, there's another magic shop there. Um, okay. No warp. Oops. Quake. No, not quake. Not blizzard. Fire three. They can learn fire three. Alright, what, uh, what do we have here? Heal two and bomb. They're both level four spells. Okay, can't learn that. Can he learn Bomb? The level 4 spell? Okay, so can't learn Bomb, can't learn Heal 2. Looks like Fire 3 they can both learn, though. So I'll take Fire 3. And Cure 3 is another one they can learn, huh? But I might want to leave... I'll leave those spell charges open. So at least I've got the Fire 3, so that just opens up spell charges for me that I can use to hopefully make my Marsh Cave crawl a little bit easier from here on. So I'm actually at level 18, I'm, kind of, I'm getting close to the level where I would be finishing the game on uh, if this was the NES version. I'd be getting close to finishing the game at levels like this. I think at the last, at the restored hack that I was playing through, I finished at level 22, maybe? I think I entered the Temple of Fiends Revisited at level 21. And, uh, and finished Chaos at level 22. So I hadn't even gotten access to the higher level white and black spells. At level 8, black, white and black spells were not yet available to me. Possible that we can take all four of these ogres out in one round, but more likely we'll be fighting another round. Ah, I think it's 120. Alright, so one more round. All of these guys are just one hit away. Trying to decide which I should do first. I think I'll do the Northwest Castle first. I think I'll do the Northwest Castle first. Just gonna re restock and save. Alright, and uh, yeah, depending how things go in the Northwest Castle, I'll either just continue right onto the Marsh Cave, or I'll head back and save. Alright, they all got their attacks off first. Was it all four of them? I believe it was. That's unfortunate with enemies like this that can stun you when they all get a turn before you do. And hopefully my last character to get 17 is getting close. 1660. Not too bad. 1660. Alright. We fought plenty of battles like this before, and these guys are fairly, fairly under our level now, but I'm still going to be doing them just to collect a little bit of experience when I can. But just poison is not fun. Yeah, 149. It's not bad. Not great, obviously, but... It's not bad uh, amount of experience to be picking up. All 
Alright, so I was just uh, trying to avoid that spot if I could. Ooh, giants in here. So they've made this a regular old proper dungeon, it looks like. With tough encounters and everything. Alright, so be it. Because you know, these guys are easier than the Marsh Cave ones. And I'll be a full two levels higher. Yeah, there we go. I'll be a full two levels higher now than when I was going into the Marsh Cave. Come on. Go around him. Alright, and there should be... Alright, now normally there's a trap square right in front of that chest, so I'm gonna go around it now. I don't know if it's been moved or fixed. This is kind of scary. I'll go ahead and use my fire three charges. Okay, this will this will help a lot. Because those regular mummies can sleep you. Even in the NES version, they can sleep you. And yeah, there we go. We have a glance. There's our stone attack. Another iron nunchuck, eh? Okay. Stones. There we go. All right. Ooh, an ambush here. So this where this is where it could be pretty nasty. And again, I'm just going to try to toast him with fire three as quickly as I can, and hope that I can get out of here with my life intact. So I actually hope I don't have to waste both of them. I hope this takes out those mummies and the wizard mummy. Okay, good. So it's just costing me. <laughs> A soft potion. Oops, I need to heal him first. So it's just co costing me a soft potion every square. <laughs> there we go. Alright, just regular mummies this time though, so not as much a worry. Um, let me back this up. Fire 2. Do oh, nothing for fire three. That's right, he uh, didn't fill up his spell charges before. When he before he got that level up and we stayed at the inn. So using as much magic as I have, I may head back to Elfland to restock. Re resupply my help. And depending on what's in this chest, I don't know if this has been a very worthwhile trip back to the Northwest Castle here. Okay, and there is the level up for that character, finally. Another falchion. Yeah, is that it now? I think that must be all there is. And if we get a strike first chance, that's nice to be able to take one of these guys out in the first round. The experience will really start to ramp up now. Which is nice. Love to be working up towards level 20. And I think I might have some more... ...armor to sell. Let me see what I have. What's my armor situation like? Yeah, I do have armor to sell. Actually, I should have done that in Elfland, so I will pop back to Elfland here real quick to restock and sell off some armor. I'm going to check that Shadow Helmet when I get back to the shop there. I'm going to pull up the README and check that Shadow Helmet. But the Mage Gauntlet is nice to, was nice to pick up. Better than the gloves, which I can now sell. 
I think the Red Mage has some uh, Red Mage unique equipment in this hack, which is also kind of fun. There's like a red shield and a red cape and a red sword. Just Red Mage specific items. Which I think is rather cool. There we go, and I'll take... I'll, even though that experience is getting to the piddly side, I will take that anytime I can get it. Fire threes left. You know, the ice won't do much to the bone, but might take the crawl out quickly if it gets off first. There we go. Yeah, and 30 to the bone. The bones resist it, I'm pretty sure. I think undead resist ice. I think they resist thunder too, maybe? That I'm not sure. Alright, so we can sell off his iron armor. Yes. And... Okay, so I need to check on the shadow helmet. Yeah, he has the mage gauntlet also. And are you sitting on another copper bracelet? Yeah, you're sitting on another copper bracelet. Alright, I'm going to check the shadow helmet. My stream will get a little bit choppy for a second. Forgive me while I check the shadow helmet. Okay, shadow helmet, thief, ninja, black belt master. Okay. So the shadow helmet is officially uh, no good for me. So I can sell that off. It is just for the more agile classes. All right. All right, so North... All right, so Northwest Castle is clear. So Northwest Castle is clear. Yeah, two fires will take out the um, the guy. I don't know if they will. Well, probably not that bottom one. kind of an annoying battle. Those battles with the mummies were nice for all that experience. Didn't love having to use those um, soft potions, but it's okay. Let's hope we just get the attack off quick here. Got him. And this will be just good for the golden experience. 327 is pretty good. And hopefully this marsh cave run will not be too bad. I kind of know where I'm going now. That battle wasn't really worth it. Hello Shahali, welcome back. I've been collecting stuff from the uh, the various treasure treasure rooms, so you haven't missed very much. If you went from your home to your work, then uh, seems like your commute isn't very long. You should count yourself lucky to not have a very long commute like a lot of folks have. <laughs> and uh, so I'll be streaming for a little while here yet. 
Um, I'm going to hopefully at least explore the first little bit of the Earth Cave. I don't know if I'll, I'll... I'll probably take a stab at the vampire. Although I've heard that it might not just be a vampire waiting for me down there. But I really don't know for sure. Haha. <laughs> But I do have to go back down into the Earth Cave to get some Mystic Key Locks treasure because uh, all of that's been shifted around, so I'm not sure exactly what's waiting for me down here, but there might be a, a nice piece that I would regret leaving behind. So it shouldn't take me too long to get down through here, though, now, now that I know where everything is and I'm two levels stronger than I was earlier, plus I've got some level 5 magic, although all I can get for level 5 on the red mages is Cure 3 and Fire 3, so I went ahead and just picked up Fire 3 for both of them. Uh, and I hope, I haven't looked carefully enough, but I hope that the, wet, the red wizards can get significantly more level 5 spells than can the red mages. And I am going to be dashing through this dungeon a little bit more, so I hope this doesn't look too gross on the stream. I'm hoping to get to the Earth Cave with enough time to significantly walk through it. Yeah, see, the spiders are running away because my, my level's too high for where I am down here. Um, let's see. I need to go in here and go all the way around, I believe. Okay, this one's worth fighting though. It's also inescapable, so worth fighting for me. But again, I'm not quite sure what's waiting for me with the vampire. Okay. Alright, then I will, uh, I will not feel bad dashing then. At least it helps me get to these battles more quickly. Yay, more of these bone crawl combos. They're still pretty deadly. I need to pick up a helmet too for my for my fighter. I thought that uh, I got my hands on an iron helmet or something. Soon here. All right, thank you Shahali for the for the tip there. One of the things I do know about my stream is I have to stream in pretty low quality because my computer is quite underpowered. So, um, I do have to be mindful of some of those things, using fast-forward keys, and, uh, and sometimes, anytime you're, you've got a lot of movement, uh, you can get a lot of bad screen fuzz. One of the worst defenders, actually, is when I fight Neo X-Death in Final Fantasy V. Oops, you know what? I'm gonna have one of the fighters go for the other giant, because this should be enough to take them out. Yes, the Neo X-Death fight really gets super choppy on my stream and makes it freeze and pixelate badly because it's, it's so much uh, so much movement. You have the huge Neo X Death Sprite. <laughs> Alright, thank you, Shahali. Are you familiar, Shahali, with the uh, Final Fantasy V final battle? Where you have the, the huge Neo X Death Sprite. Is that big, beautiful sprite the size of the screen shaking and vibrating all around. Ah, uh, yes, Zer yeah, Zeromus would be bad, also. Yes, Zeromus would be bad. I, do I haven't streamed Final Fantasy IV ever. I've played it, but I haven't streamed it. Although I did stream the, um, the final battle in the Final Fantasy V Ancient Cave hack, in which they, they stuck Zeromus uh, in place of Neo Death. So your final battle is actually a battle with a combination Zeromus and uh, Neo X Death. So he uses Big Bang, like Zeromus, um, but also uses Grand Cross. <laughs> yeah, you're not, not familiar with enough to not die. Yeah, interesting. So, well, this summer, I'm always a big proponent of the Final Fantasy V Four Job Fiesta, and it's it's coming. So. There's no better time to get into learning Final Fantasy V than when uh, than when the Fiesta rolls around. I I like it. What's next? Fallen one, yes, and uh, Supernova. 
They, uh, I suppose the, the hackers could have put any of that stuff in there. I like it. Fallen one would have been a good one to add to it. <laughs> yeah, so it makes it pretty deadly combo, and I think they, the ancient cave hack boss has like 200,000 health, so there's not multiple targets like there is with the regular x death in FF5. There's four targets in the FF5 version. They took that part out, but um, they gave the main part like 200,000 health. So it really takes a long time to, to wear it down, especially when it's grand crossing you for all those statuses and big banging you for all that damage. Are you working your way through it slowly on the phone? Yeah. The uh, I've never played the mobile version of the game, so I can't really speak to that. I'm sure it works okay. A lot of the bugs have been fixed, I would imagine. Sometimes beneficial, sometimes not. Yes, Bardic. Uh, Bardic music is a powerful tool in that game. You can really do a lot of things with bards. Especially if you can manage battles long enough to let the bards buff everybody up to uh, incredible levels. Alright, so I don't know if any of these are going to be trapped. Um, some of the, the chests in the Temple of Fiends were trapped with sorcerers and wizards, so there's no reason to think that these won't be trapped. And I guess it's hard to tell if that was trapped or if that was just a regular battle. I'm guessing trapped, though. Because I think something they did in, a, in this hack is, is made a lot of, of shortcuts and passages just full of spiked squares, as I discovered in Astos' castle there. If you walk uh, behind the middle treasure chest, every tile is spiked with mummies and wizard mummies, which can uh, cast stone spells on you. Or they use the glance ability, I guess. It's not really a spell, an ability. So I hope this stuff is worth it. Whatever's down here, I hope it's worth the trouble of walking back into this dungeon. Fighting these spiked squares. Okay, so it is going to be a, a battle on every square. Okay. These regular mummies are alright. The wizard mummies are the ones that were used in Glance. These mummies, I'm sure, still have the, the power to sleep you. Okay. Alright, so it's just those two. Alright, a silver bracelet. Actually, that might be an upgrade for one of my mages. Um, let me check this guy, because he doesn't have that already. So we are at 1848. 48, and now it's 2262. Okay, so big time. Big time. Okay, so you didn't you didn't get all the bard songs at the, at the right time. Well, some of them are not really worth going after. Like that magic song is permanently missable. Magic song is. But uh, it's not really worth it. It's not really one that I use ever. I'm going to actually have both fighters go after him. Uh, and here's when I'm going to start using my fire threes. Yeah, but some of them are definitely worth worth going for. Like, the regen song is good, um, and, and the, they're translated differently, so I can't... Um, if I'm using an older translation version, um, it might not be as clear, but, but the regen song is a good one. The hero song is one the one that buffs your levels is insanely good. I think that's the one you get from playing all the pianos and then playing the last piano at the um, the Bard's house in... is it Crescent? Crescent Village, I think, is where the Bard's house is there. So the hero song is definitely worth doing it. The Paralyzed song is good, or yeah, the Stop song, whatever that is. Yeah, Paralyzing the Bombs. That one's a, That's a good way to beat Omega, which is a, an optional super boss in the final dungeon. Not sure if you're familiar with Omega or if you've come upon that part of the game yet. But he's one of the optional challenges in the 4-job fiesta. You get your fiesta party. 
you can get a little optional star by your name. Oh yes, Mighty March. <laughs> yeah, Mighty March I think is the, the same one they use in... Um, they, they use that translation in the GBA version, but not in the fan-translated um, Super NES version. And I'm familiar with the GBA and the, and the SNES fan translation. So you're at, at Ziza's fleet? Okay. So you're, that's in World 2, I think. Good part of the game? Because every part of that game is a good part of the game. <laughs> I'm also on the... In addition to doing stuff with the Blue Marlin and Final Fantasy here, I'm going to heal up again. I'm working on a solo Time Mage run of Final Fantasy V. But I'm doing that off-stream because it requires a, a lot of grinding and a lot of luck. A lot of luck farming which just are not as exciting for, for a stream. Part of it's because I'm not quite as knowledgeable as uh, some of the Final Fantasy V experts. But it's just kind of fun, uh, kind of forces you to learn the systems a little bit when you do just have uh, a restricted party. And of course, the solo character is taking a restricted party to the nth degree. A certain boisterous character, yes, there is a boisterous character waiting for you. I didn't want to <laughs> spoil that for you, but yes, there is a, a boisterous character. Alright, another mage gauntlet, that's great. Um, yeah. Use that instead of the gloves. Get rid of those gloves here very soon. Yes. Gilgamesh is a, uh, a very fun part of the game. And I'm not sure how they translated his dialogue in the mobile version. But in both the Super NES and the GBA versions, he has some pretty hilarious lines, like, time we fight like men and ladies, and ladies who dress like men. That's one of the fan favorites of Gilgamesh. He's also kind of a sexist. Later on, he tells, uh, Ferris that she just needs to fall in love, then she'd be more feminine. So Gilgamesh is also a sexist pig. Alright. I don't want to take any more steps in here than I need to. Alright, and... Heal again, because I, I never know when I'm going to be running into... Ten wizards or something. I figured that this, this would be trapped with something. Go fire three again. First time you read that, yeah, it was a great slow line, yeah. Yep, that is a good one. <laughs> Alright, and just money? Alright, so... I don't know, nothing down here is really, um... Anything to write home about. Heh <laughs> Yes, and now we fight like men, alright? And ladies, what? And ladies who dress like men. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's just trying to be uh, accommodating, I guess, during that. Alright. Okay, and this is one more. I think this is the last one. Yeah, so uh, yeah, he is just, he's just being inclusive. Your party does have one of each of those. Alright, again, I'm glad I really... I, I grinded up all those levels to be dealing with fights like this. To have the kind of hit point totals that I can tank a few of these attacks from these guys. Yeah, Gilgamesh is a pretty fun part of that game, so he's kind of the mascot of the 4-Job Fiesta. He's the... Uh, the Twitter bot that uh, we use to sign up for the Fiesta is is maintained, quote-unquote, by, by Gilgamesh. What's a good man? Hello to Fishman. The Fishman. 
Hey, big news on the Blue Marlin front, Fishman. Uh, TMR, the Mexican runner, finally did that on his uh, NES Mania show. Um, and I met another Blue Marlin speedrunner in the chat of that show. So we now have uh, a growing community of Blue Marlin speedrunners. And he actually has a really sick any percent time. He has a sub 10 minute any percent time in the Blue Marlin. So he's inspired me to uh, to go back and do some more more homework in the game. So I was I had my memory editor out last night with the Blue Marlin looking at uh, how some of the stats are calculated, things that I had always meant to do but uh, hadn't done yet. And it also means I'm going to be going back to any percent speed run grinding now that we have some competition for it. I need to try to beat that sub 10 minute time. Silver Sword. All right, that's a nice that's a nice chunk. Can do that. Hey, the fish man, you you joke, um, Blue Marlin and AGDQ, but it might happen. If we can get a reliable, um, a reliable way, oops, did I equip that? Yeah, I did. 4176. If we can get a, re a reliable route, ugh. Um, that it certainly could be an AGDQ game, and maybe it'll be a four-way race, and maybe you will be in the four-way race. Don't, don't ever give up your dreams of Blue Marlin speedrun supremacy. Come on. Gotta get through these menus. There we go. So it's, it's there. It's possible. I mean, the last thing we really need to do for the speed mark, for the, the speedrun is to kind of learn how to manipulate, um, fish spawn sizes. Because right now it's still pretty luck-based. Uh, and that's what, um, this other guy whose name is Supreme Oppressor, that's what he did for his sub-10 minute run. He just had really nice spawn luck. You've been messing around with Mountain Blade? I've seen that you've been streaming, but our, our time zones are are shifted in such a way that it's hard for me to catch you live, Fishman. So uh, I will try to pop in when I can. But uh, living where I do in Ireland, uh, it's tough for me if you're streaming at, like, a normal time for North Americans. <laughs> That's usually pretty late at night for me. And this is a time that I have free in the afternoons. That's uh, a nice early morning time for North Americans. <laughs> well, we're, are we analyzing Gilgamesh's... Uh, personality. I like it. Alright, and is this... Are we finished with all that? Okay. Yep. Ooh, so Dissidia... Yeah? So, Dissidia Gilgamesh is also a jerk, huh? Thinks everybody should have very strict social roles. I like... I like it. I haven't actually played Dissidia. Gilgamesh doesn't say very much. He pops up in Final Fantasy VIII, and the only thing he says in that one, I think, is he asks where the void is. I think this is like a reference to uh, the Final Fantasy V void, where he gets sent to. Presumably, that's where he comes out of in Final Fantasy VIII. All right, so there was there was my um, dungeon crawl of the Marsh Cave. It looks like that's all that's in here. The Silver Sword was was a nice pickup. Probably not indispensable, but this is a nice pickup. Still not enough to give me that extra hit. I'll have to get a number of additional levels before I get another hit out of that. Because I don't think Gilgamesh pops up in Final Fantasy 6 or 7, but you see him again in 8. Is he in 9? Does Gilgamesh pop up in Final Fantasy 9? Now here's this battle again. I don't know if, if he does. It's been a long time since I've played 9, and I played less of 9 than 7 or 8 on the PS1. And then that was kind of the last 
new RPG that I ever really played. That was really the last new game that I ever played when it was new. I think that's the last, the last time I purchased a game at retail for full price in a package was Final Fantasy IX. Ooh. He's a... So, he's sexist, but uh, he's a ladies' man, so he's like a... Uh, he's a playa. He's one of those kinds. Wow, 41 damage? Only one hit, and always oh, he's on darkness status. I was wondering why he was doing so little damage. I didn't uh, look up to see his dark status. Like, one hit for 41. And so, Shahali, when you get uh, to the later parts of FF5, and you see Gilgamesh in his prime, you'll recognize him. You'll know him. <laughs> FF13 was the last one you bought, and it was not a good investment. I'm sorry to hear that, Fishman. I'm sorry that it didn't uh, live up to your expectations. That's always hard when that happens to us. So, so Holly, you haven't updated consoles, and I, nor have I. I haven't updated a console. The newest piece of hardware I have is a PS2, but I got that uh, long after the PS2 launched. It's a it's a PS2 Slim, one of those one of the last generation or so of of PS2s that came out, and I I didn't really buy any games for it new. I did I did end up picking up some games for it uh, mostly used, but didn't buy anything for it new, and it didn't really spend much time playing. I spent most of my time playing my PlayStation One games on the PS2. I was playing playing through Final Fantasy VIII and Seven and Tactics. And my Resident Evil games. Yikes. The crawl is frustrating with the stunning. Wow, so you... You gave up the, uh, the PS3. Yeah, that credit breach was, uh, was bad news. I was very sorry to hear about that when that happened. I was very sorry for all of the PS3 owners. The good folks who shelled out their hard-earned money to get a product and then have that happen to them, I thought that was quite unfair. I mean, I was glad that it didn't happen to me, but uh, yeah, I know that Sony didn't handle that very well. And then, of course, Microsoft has the has the big scandal with their um, their consoles being released with the the red ring of death problem. So it's uh, it's very hard to trust. When you're buying hardware like that, that it's going to uh, live up to your standards and not turn out to be a bust for you. It's going to save some heal potions. This way. Alright, so after this I'll be able to head on to the Earth Cave and start digging around there a little bit. So you bought FF2 on mobile, okay, just to support the the creators, and there, there's definitely a there, there's definitely a lot of merit to that, Jahali, and I think a lot of emulator people, I guess you could probably count myself among that. I mean, I'm not really, I don't do it, I don't emulate just because I want to spite game makers. I'm like, I demand to play your games for free, but as you said, a lot of times, an emulator is a superior experience. Particularly with old RPGs, um, and 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 when remakes are less than faithful to the classic that you might be used to. If you like a really hardcore 8-bit RPG, remakes are generally not the way to go. As I learned when I was playing through the Dawn of Souls version of this. Yes, and now I did buy FF1 in a box. Yep, so I'm I'm with you on that. I got it from from KB Toys. I remember buying FF1, so I have 
I have thrown money at the creators in that way. Oh, the Android version is crashy? Ooh. Yeah, that's not great. Okay, so it's not just that it's uh, an improper port, but uh, it's buggy. And not, not in a good way, not like temper not working. Yeah, KB Toys is a throwback, Fishman, yes. Um, ugh. This battle's gross. Either one of these Ice 3s should take them all out, or Ice 2s. Okay, so the only way to get out of it is to, to crash it with the back button. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that, but I do I do applaud you for um, supporting the creators in your own way by buying the mobile version and then just enjoying the superior emulator experience. I have to say. <laughs> okay, so you don't... Uh, Alright, I understand now. It's just, it's actually just a better made product. The emulated version is a better product. Oh, emulating the PSP version with the same sprite. Okay, alright. I see what you mean now. I didn't, I, I don't even, the, those newer versions like that, like the PSP one, I don't even, those don't even enter my, my calculus when I think about that, so. You didn't know it was bad until you played through the, yeah, through the Android version. Yeah, that's too bad. It's, it's hard to pay money for something and not have it live up to at least a standard of quality, like a piece of software you'd expect to work without any problems. Actually, I'm not going to save yet. I'm going to sell just a little bit here. Um, sell my Silver Knight, my Silver Knight, the Nunchucks. Okay, so yeah. Emulating the PSP version is just better. Seems like just a smoother experience. Alright, so let me see what all I can sell here. I can sell the extra long sword, the silver, and the iron. Okay. Yeah, I would draw the line at buggy software too. I would, I mean, absolutely. Why give them your hard-earned money for something that doesn't work? Absolutely don't do that. And if it's just a, you know, if it's a crappy game, that's one thing, because everyone has a different idea of what a good game and a crappy game is. But uh, I think everyone can agree that a crashy game, as opposed to a crappy game, uh, is unacceptable to be selling for money. Giving it away? Fine. But uh, if you're going to ask money for something, better be good. Um, what did I want to get rid of? The, the chain armor I can get rid of. Is he still... He's still working on chain armor. What else did I want to get rid of? Alright, that was it. Oh, the, oh, so Square doesn't uh, update their mobile releases, so when you get a new version of uh, of an operating system, your apps don't work or they don't work correctly anymore? That's too bad. Yeah. Ooh. For half a year till Square gets around to uh, updating it. Well, it's hard. Their incentive is not to update it. Their incentive, I mean, they don't really make as much money updating it for new OS. They've already sold their... They update very slowly. Like, they've already sold most of what they're going to sell in the first few weeks that it's out. Those classic RPGs, I think the audience for those is small enough that uh, they probably, if they want it, they'll buy it shortly after it comes out, and then... Ah, why put in the money and the time to uh, update with the OS? We've already sold it to those jerks. Let me see if I can just get out of this one, because this is kind of an irritating battle. Yeah. It's pretty decent golden experience, but a very irritating fight. Alright, so I'm going to save here a Melmond. Um, and do I have... 
Okay, I do want to stock up. Oh no, do I not? Okay, there is an item shop here. I was like, do I need to run back to uh, Elfland to go to the item shop? Okay, so they plan not to update the world ends with you. That's interesting. So it was the, the social media campaign kind of forced their hand a little bit, huh? Yeah, I, I thought that Melmon didn't. And so I was kind of worried there for a second when I saw that uh, I didn't have enough, enough heal potions. But yeah, it looks like he's added it. So he's added bridges in a lot of places too that make getting around towns and uh, getting in through buildings a lot easier. So like a lot of castles have openings in them now. Instead of walking way around stuff, you can go uh, directly into doors. How many of these was I down? I thought it was less than nine down. Okay. Um, and I'm going to buy a couple of tents. Alright, so I'm glad I'm glad you also thought that Melmond uh, didn't have a item shop. I'm going to buy soft. Alright, yeah, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Cause, yeah. So the, the magic shops are a little bit different, as you can see here, too. So this has a, a one white and one black level 4 spell that's a little bit better than the stuff in um, in Elfland. And then these are level 5. Just like before, these are level 5 magic shops. One thing I wonder, does this... This doesn't have a clinic, does it? Still no clinic? I mean, I think that's part of the story, so I I understand why that would be the case. Um, Alright, so let me see what I can upgrade here. Alright, the silver armor should be an upgrade for one of my fighters. Yeah. Okay, the silver armor and the silver uh, bracelet are upgrades for us. And I have plenty of money from all that grinding, so that's not an issue. Cool. Yes. Alright, and now I can sell the iron and the chain. Right, I, I remember that now. As I was saying that, I was like, that's right, the vampire destroyed their clinic, um, and that they made a point to, uh, to tell you that, so I'm okay with that. Um, I could use one more iron gauntlet. <laughs> yep. A future. I like. I like that phrase a lot. A few trips around the Aldi Sea to going to Canary to revive and Elfland to soften. I like to soften. That's nice. When you run into those uh, cockatrices down there. Oops. Uh, but I can use one more iron gauntlet for you. That's very, very well put. Okay. So we should be good there. I can't believe I still don't have any a helmet. I, I sold that turban off thinking I was going to pick up a helmet sometime. But uh, not the case. Alright, and nothing here I need. I don't know if I want to be messing around with the axes. Okay, so I got my armor set. Now I can save. I think I've already saved before. It looks like they've upped the price of the inn here in Melmont. Alright. Let's finally get down to the Earth Cave. So I've got about a half hour or so left today, so maybe I'll, I'll just explore the first few floors of the Earth Cave. Actually, I'll just run from this one. I want to save my spell charges if I can. Save my fire twos, fire threes. Good, glad I got out. And uh, let's see if he's moved the mountains around here. Oops, let's go back. He can one-shot him. 
Now that he's got the Silver Sword, he should be able to one-shot the Green Ogre there. I like six hits, eight damage, that's nice. Ooh, couldn't quite one-shot the Green Ogre. That's alright. 137 seemed like a pretty low damage roll for him to run into. What's he get on this one? Oh, 147. Maybe his attack didn't uh, bump up all that much. As much as I thought. Right, there's 19. What are you doing? Okay. So, and he's getting close. Yeah, so there is still a Hall of Giants here. And there's a treasure chest in there that I'm going to try to go for. In the Hall of Giants. Actually, I don't want to fight this one. Because there's a there's a good spell casting weapon I think um, in there, so I'll be fighting a lot of giant battles. So thankfully, probably for the uh, for Melmon having an item shop, although he did troll us here with uh, making us walk all the way around this extra mountain range to get to the Earth Cave. So that's a nice little extra bit of uh, work we have to do. To get to and from the Earth Cave. Paralyzed Poison. Paralyzed Poison. Yeah, I imagine the, the battles are going to get uh, even more intense from here. Alright. I have to spiral all the way in on these. And I don't have access to silver swords for everybody, which would be kind of a no-brainer on a casual playthrough with the party that I have on the NES version, would be to have a silver sword on everybody. Let me compare his damage. So 4176. 39.77. Okay, so the Silver Sword must not be as much of an upgrade over the Long Sword as I remember. Either that or the Long Sword is more powerful than I remember. I thought the difference was more, but, but nothing, nothing is static in this version, so anything could be different. So I guess I should... I need to keep uh, tempering my expectations and never assuming that anything will be as it is in the NES version, the one that I know love so well. Yeah, this is not super fun, having to go around this long, circuitous trip to get to the Earth Cave. I think the Earth Cave is challenging enough, probably. <laughs> Even in the NES version, I'd say the Earth Cave is challenging enough. Oh, it's not too bad. It's better than the Marsh Cave, or, or you're better able to handle it, I believe. Now we should be able to use our tent. Okay. So let's head over to the Hall of Giants and start fighting battles every step. Ooh. That's a nice way to start it. Ambushed and turned to stone by the Saurio. Yay. I should have probably had the fighter also attack the Soria. Because I don't have enough damage to kill any of them in this one round. Alright, I'm glad the curse missed on that character. That could have been pretty nasty. Alright, so there's one battle down. My experience is really going to start to shift now that I'm going to be dealing with as many stones as it looks like I'm going to be dealing with. And I'll have to very... Ooh, another ambush. Ooh. This is, this is rough. I'm going to be dealing with this every step. This is going to be a, a rough little trip. Yeah, there's, there's Curse.
Okay, so those Sorias are gonna be a real pain. And ooh, ZZ is getting close to death. I need to get out of this battle quickly. Just so that I don't lose him. Okay. Soft first. Pure second. Heal potions now. Alright, and rearrange here. Okay. Now, one more step. And one more battle. And ambush again. Okay, and glance missed this time. These guys just must have a really, really high ambush percent like those shadow enemies do. But if I can avoid the, the stone and the curse from these guys on the first one. But if he can miss his glance attack, that would be really nice. I'm gonna get a screen cap of this. <laughs> so, uh, Shahali, welcome back. We are in the, um, the Hall of Giants in the Earth Cave. But, uh, there's, there's a treasure room here in the Hall of Giants now that has a really nice treasure, and I can't remember what it is, but it's a really nice treasure. But, um, just as before, every step has a battle with giants in it, but there's also Sauria enemies, and they have a very high ambush rate, uh, as in every single battle I've been in has been an ambush, and the Saurias in their AI have uh, the glance ability to turn a character to stone, so I have had... So I've had someone turn to stone in almost every one of these battles, because there'll be an ambush. The Saria will do the glance attack, and, uh, and will be turned to stone. Yeah, and it, it's... <laughs> I think I think it is a worthwhile treasure. So it uh, should be worth grabbing. But I'll, I'll definitely have to come out of the dungeon after this first floor or so, and go back and restock on stuff, on heal potions probably specifically, but that's okay because I, I have about 15 minutes or so left in streaming time, so I'll just, I can call this a, a chance to explore the Earth Cave a little bit, get the treasures out of the first couple of floors, and then maybe I'll start the next stream by going to, uh, going after the vampire, but you can see again, Lance turn to stone on the first ambush round. So that's, that's going to be happening all the way out on the way back, too. Yeah, and that fighter might not even make it. Alright, well, at least the stone... With the stone there, he can't get killed, which is nice. With, uh... His health... Where his health is, he can't get taken out. So that actually was maybe a beneficial, uh, stoning. Now, these giants... On the other hand, I really need to do some damage to them with Fire 3. There we go. I had two really low rolls on Fire 3 there in that, the last round. I was kind of scared. Alright. So I should be able to survive this battle, but it'll be two stones. Because Soria looks like it can... It has status attack stone and also the glance ability. So that's why they've lowered the price of soft potions. Is it you're going to be <laughs> using a lot of them going through this dungeon? Alright, there we go. Alright, one more step. One more battle. Let's see if we can... Oh, so this one's a non-ambush, so they just... They have a very high ambush rate, but it's not an automatic ambush. That's good, because that'll give me a chance if I can get a few attacks in before it does its glance. 
ability. Or all four attacks before it does its glance ability. That's good. And yeah, those giants are really doing a lot of damage. Even with my even with the silver armor and the iron gauntlets, they're getting through and uh, causing a lot of havoc. So I wonder if their attack value has been boosted a little bit. We ought to be close to a level up by the time we get out of this uh, Hall of Giants. It's a great way to grind, I guess. Okay, Zombles. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna save another Fire 3. Um, yeah, you know what? I might spread my fighter's attacks out a little bit if I'm gonna have a cast of Fire 3. Just in case that Fire 3 does a lot more damage than I... than I think it will. Well, that's less than I thought. Yeah, 240, that would have been nice to do in the first one. I would have liked 240 on the first one. This should be close to dead now. But this will be another one that uh, will be good for experience. I'm afraid this is, this is probably not the most exciting thing to watch. Alright, screen caps there for whatever this is going to be. And it's guarded, of course, by... Wow. And Earth, the vampire, or a vampire, and gargoyles. Alright, well, this is as good a time as any, I guess, to unleash with my fire threes. And then I just have to try to get out of this Hall of Giants. Alright, fast on the Earth. That's bad news. Alright. He's done. Alright. That ended up being an easy battle with those Fire Threes. What do we got? Atlas Gauntlet. Oh, I think... Does the Atlas Gauntlet cast Temper? I think it casts Temper. Um, but can I also equip it? Let's see. 3451. 4150. Okay, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice boost in, um, in Absorb. Yeah. Alright, uh, now I just need to get out of here. So I'm gonna go uh, YOLO on the potions. I'm going to be fighting stuff every step again. Okay, do I have any Fire 3s left? No. You've got a Fire 2. Do you have a Fire 3? You've got one. Alright, I'll use, the, I'll use the one. Whoa! 216! Let's hope that... Yeah. I'd like to see damage in the, one, in the 160s. That'd be good. Take him out. Okay. So just one more, one more left. Let's hope we can get the kill before ZZ gets taken out. Just trying to survive every battle we can. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be testing out the Atlas Gauntlet, but I think it casts Temper on your, on yourself. Way to, to self cast temper. Alright, sorry, a glance. Alright, the glance missed. So these back to the guys that have the really high ambush rate. So actually, at the rate I'm going here, it probably will be time for me to stop uh, as soon as I can get out of the Earth Cave here. So I will do that. I'll stop as soon as I'm out of the Earth Cave with my Atlas Gauntlet. <laughs> 
I thought I was going to have time to look around a little more on the first floor of the Earth Cave here, but these battles are really taking it out of me. No ambush here. And I think before I stream next, um, which might be, it might be into next week before I can stream again on this, on this particular game. There's a stone spell. I might do some more, uh, leveling up. So I can handle the Earth Cave a little bit better. Because I think that's going to make this stream a little bit more watchable, uh, is having my characters at a pretty high level, rather than watching me die over and over again, trying to get good luck. So I'll take the grindy stuff. I can handle grindy, uh, but probably don't want to be doing grindy stuff on stream. And I don't want to do anything that's a surprise. There we go. So I'll try to be prepared as I can for the various dangers and treasures that I'll be running into without having a, uh, a back right in front of me, because I don't know if there's a full back of this game. There is, there is the readme that uh, tells you what all the weapons and armor do, which is very handy, but I don't think there's, an, there's a walkthrough that says where all the treasure is and what all of it is. Alright, good. No stone. I'll take that. And I'd love to see everybody get up to level 20 or close to level 20 here before I'm out of the Hall of Giants or, or out of the Earth Cave. But yeah, after uh, after I get out of the Earth Cave here, it's going to be close to a three-hour stream for me, and that's right about the outer limits of my streaming ability, and it's uh, time of day that I need to get off the computer and off the stream. I'd like to test that Atlas Atlas armlet, but all these guys are so deadly. Maybe I'll do it after the story is dead. Oh, no, I can't, because he has the Atlas gauntlet, and he's turned to stone. Isn't that nice? 